Hi. In this lesson, I want us to um, put into practice some of the things that we learned um, about sea level change uh, in the previous lesson. I thought we'd start here. This is the uh, very pretty um, fishing village on the west coast of Scotland called Dunyur. You can see that the, um, the houses here are built up on this um, surprisingly flat area uh, tucked in by the coasts. They're actually built on an old beach deposit. That beach deposit has been lifted out of the sea. You know, it's very clear evidence of this isostatic uplift uh, that's affected um, really all of Scotland. What I want us to do is I want us to look into a bit more detail at some of the data um, behind this that perhaps helps explain what's going on. Now, to start with, I thought we'd um, look at somewhere else. This is Scandinavia, uh, the area around the uh, Baltic Sea. And this map shows us the, the ongoing isostatic uplift. You can see in parts of this uh, graph, we've got um, about nine millimeters a year of uplift. That's a huge amount. It may not sound very much, but you know, once we start looking at uh, over even relatively short periods of geological time, that can lead to a great deal of uplift. Now, clearly, there's a variation here. Where the ice is thickest up in the uh, the north of Sweden, there, that's where we're getting most rebound. But if we look further south. Look to Denmark, for example. See, there are parts there that have an uplift of minus one millimetre a year. That means it's sinking very slowly into the sea. If we think about the processes that cause this, it's all down to uh, mantle flow. So this diagram shows us um, where we have an ice sheet that pushes down uh, on the crust which pushes down uh, the asthenosphere beneath it, which can deform, it flows. And it flows away from where the, uh, where the weight is actually acting on the crust. That material actually then will flow to the area around the ice sheet, creating these four bulges. Now that means that the crust, uh, if we remove the ice sheet, is it going to be out of equilibrium? The forces acting on the crust there are not going to be equal. We're not going to have stability. So the mantle material, the asthenosphere that's been displaced, will start to flow back to where it was displaced from. The consequence of that is that the forebulge is going to sink, and that depressed part of the crust, under what was an ice sheet, will start to rise. That's the situation that Scotland is in. Okay, you're going to need this uh, handout. Just to give you some uh, contacts here, Dunure is on the Ayrshire coast uh, where I've indicated, showing about 10 metres of uplift. Okay, there are a series of questions there for you to have a go at. Work through those, see if you can uh, work them out. In particular, I'd like to have a go at that calculation. But I want you to think carefully about the answer you get, because the answer you get, I think, won't be what you're expecting. Anyway, have a go at it, see what you can come. Okay then, let's have a look at some answers. So, this map shows us that there's a variation in isostatic uplift. So places around the north coast of Scotland, the Outer Hebrides, uh, aren't uplifting at all. 
But if we look at the area around Fort William, marked on the map there, we can see we've had, in the last six and a half thousand years, 12 metres of uplift. And even now, um, it's uplifting at um, a rate of three millimetres a year. Now, the reason for that is that we have bigger thicknesses of ice, firstly, where we have mountains, which is, okay, are distributed around Scotland, but pre predominantly in the west there, but also because the prevailing wind is bringing um, moisture, so snowfall, off the Atlantic Ocean and depositing it on those mountains uh, in the west of Scotland. So that's where we're going to have the thickest ice. I then ask you to work out the ice thickness that could have caused that uplift. If we put the these, um, these figures into our equation, we get a uh, density of ice there is 920, rounded to two significant figures. Um, the static uplift is 12 metres, and the density of the asthenosphere there is 3,300 kilograms per cubic metre. Notice I've kept all the units are the same. Okay, uh, kilograms and metres. We then need to rearrange the equation uh, to make the thickness of the ice the subject. So we end up with that sum. And the answer is a surprising 43 metres. Now we'd expect that to be a lot more. We need to think about why that is. The next question gives you a big hint towards that. It's telling you that this figure must be an underestimate. You know, 43 metres is, is, is tiny. We need to look carefully at the data. The map I've given you is only from the last 6,500 years, well after the end of the last ice age. So a lot of the isostatic uplift had actually happened by this point. Remember the curve of uplift that we've seen in a previous lesson. Also, eustatic sea level change has already occurred. This is uh, the uplift from the eustatic sea level rise. So actually, um, it's going to be at least 112 metres because sea levels have come up by 100 metres eustatically. Um, and that's before we account for the uplift that must have occurred before uh, 6,500 years ago. Also, we haven't reached equilibrium yet. This is still moving. You know, it's still uplifting. Now, I've sort of alluded to this already. Uh, loch Linney, this long, straight uh, sea loch that Fort William is at the uh, near the top of, uh, is a fjord. It's a, a glacial valley that's been um, uh, flooded then by the sea as the sea level's risen. Um, now, if sea level's risen by 100, 120 metres, the base of the valley hasn't uplifted by that much. So, to conclude, we can see that there's evidence around the coast of Scotland for uh, this uplift. Places like Dunure, you're looking at sunset over Dunure Castle here, have been lifted out of the sea as the mantle is flowing back underneath the crust uh, of Scotland where it was displaced during the last glacier. But this system isn't yet in equilibrium. It hasn't, the crust hasn't sorted itself out completely since the last ice age. What we need to do now is perhaps a, a more detailed study task on looking at some of the wider implications of the sea level change. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.